Now we left off the last uh, video um, talking about the topography and we set all this up and we put our uh, site point in and our project base point in and I said I'd cover topography in the next video. A bit nasally in this one but uh, never mind just bear with it. Um, we're on the massing and site tab. Uh, this is where you'll find the topo surface. Now there's a number of ways to create a topo surface. You can either create it from uh, points files that you might get from a surveyor. You can create from uh, an import instance such as a CAD file that might have a contour map uh, associated to it. Or you can just make it from placing points at various uh, heights above your project base point. So we'll have a look at the several different ways of doing it. I haven't got a contour file to bring in, but I'll bring in a, um, a CSV file, which is a, basically a, just a list of points which uh, I've included in the project documents. And they'll also just generate it by clicking on a few points and we can uh, modify the topography as well. So you get an idea of how these things are created. Uh, mostly you probably just put something in um, by creating a few points and uh, raising or lowering the uh, spot heights. Uh, you might know the spot heights along sort of road lines or curb edges, etc., from surveyor's drawings, so it's fairly easy to get something that kind of represents the um, lay of the land. It is really important, however, to make sure that you do put in uh, some sort of topography, uh, simply because the world uh, just isn't flat. It might appear to you that everything's built on a flat surface, but uh, there would be no need for stairs apart from getting from one level to another if that was the case. So everywhere is sloping. Rarely is it as flat as a billiard table. So we have to account for that. Now, cutting and filling is an expensive operation. It involves sort of digging stuff out, getting rid of it, or importing stuff in to a site. So getting the cut and fill values uh, on a site is uh, also something you can do in Revit. Um, we'll look at that in class. We won't actually look at it on this video, but um, we've got to leave something for the classroom environment. So we'll crack on with the topo surface. So again, matting and site tab, click on the topo surface. On the modify edit surface, uh, context ribbon comes up and we've got these options. Place point, create from import. This one here to simplify the surface as well. So that's another thing we can do. So I'm going to create from import. So there's a couple of ways. Select import instance. This would, if I had a an imported uh, contour file or an imported CAD file, then I could click on this and select the file. Uh, but I'm going to choose this method, specify points file. So I click on that and it opens up the um, browser. Now browse for the project files and this is what you want, height data dot CSV. So click on that and then click on open. Now it's going to ask you what unit in the file equals one, and in this case it's meters. Just say OK, and then it brings in a surface. Then you have to click on this little green tick to make sure that you finish your edit, and then you're away. So what we get is this thing. This is just basically um, a file that, if we look at it in 3D, looks a bit like this. Okay, so it's got some heights associated to it. You can see the contour lines that are on here as well. And I can sort of drag this into place. Um, it's far too high at the moment. So if we go into our east elevation, then we can click on this edge and move this down. So it's a bit more realistic. Now it's sitting below our slab at the moment. So this sort of situation, you could end up with probably bringing a lot of extra stuff into site and costing a necessary amount of money. Now, I can't suggest that for a minute that you just, if this is the situation, you'd move the ground up. But uh, you certainly wouldn't pile it up like this. You would make sure your piles came so that the ground was somewhere sort of sensible on it. Not always the case, but uh, for the purposes of this, just think that you've got to try and get the ground sort of just round about this sort of level so ultimately it's about 150 200 mil below this slab edge now again you're not always going to be in a situation where it all lines up beautifully and that's why revit invented things called building pads which will just squish down the ground 
relative to your site. So it allows you then to create paths and other bits of landscaping around the actual site. Again, to mention that you have to bear in mind the ground exists. And also notice in this elevation view that you can still edit the surface. So if I just click on edit surface, that now we've got our top of surface that we can edit. If I do a little drag around that node point there, when we look at the elevation of it, it's 3328. So that's 3,328 millimeters um, up from this level zero. Okay, it's all referencing uh, this point here. If I just go back to modify surface and close that down for a moment, because we'll look at it again in 3D view and just orbit it around a bit. Now, as it stands, we have got a big sort of landslide happening across this part of the site. And it might be that we want this landscaping to exist in this sort of area. Okay, so what we could do is just drag this over. Now, we, we've got a fictitious site here. I've just double clicked on the site plan so it's easier to move this stuff around. So I'm selecting this and this is our high bit which is sitting just inside the model. So I can just easily drag that so it's sitting sort of outside of that model. And then if I wanted to extend this topography uh, a little bit further across there, I could edit the surface and notice that we've got these node points. If I sort of clicked on that one, this is uh, 1328. This one is 328. This one here is minus uh, 1671. So you've got these various heights above or below our project sort of ground level. So what I'm going to do at the moment is I could just click and drag these. So I'm stretching out like so. But that's going to then stretch everything in relation to this. So I'm just stepping back one by control Z on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is place a point. And if I place a point with an elevation of zero over here, then it's going to join that height to this elevation zero. So it's dropping down at that point. And I can click over here and it just finds sort of the straightest edge between these things. I can come out this way as well. And all it's doing is adding a, a level zero point over here. I could also click on this and say 250, for example, and then we'll be coming sort of up a bit. Maybe I want to come up there and come up there. And again, it adjusts the whole site. Now, in this case, if I went and put a 250 around here, it's going to create some weird effects there. It's going to sharpen this whole bit up because it's going steeply up now and dropping back sharply. So we'll just say yes to those modifications. And then we'll look back at 3D. And we can see that sort of sharpness occurring sort of in this area where it's dropped down again. And we can also see now that zero thing has lifted up our ground relative to that point so there's only one bit which is below the ground which is kind of fine because what we're going to do next is add a building pad and the building pad is going to squish everything down to a level of our choosing so again i'll go back to the site plan it's always better to put these things in in the 2d view as opposed to a 3d view i'll also turn this to hidden line because it's a bit easier to see and then back to our massing and site. And then this thing is now uh, an option, building pad. So I'll click on building pad. And we've got uh, this thing here, pad, pad one. If I edit the type of the pad, it just tells me that the structure is made up of structure by category. It's all random stuff and it's 304.8. So I'll just say fine with that because I can adjust it later. And again, we've got things like the course scale, fill color, uh, which is black and other options that we've got in there. So we'll just be happy with our system family pad and we say okay to that. So then we're back to the sketch options and if I say I want to pick lines and I also want an overhang say of about 300 off the edge so 300 for my offset and then I can sort of hover over these lines I'll zoom in a bit so I can hover over that and just click there and click on the outside edge of that. I can always adjust this later. And if I want to come in around this bit, then I just keep going around this edge. And it doesn't matter that we've got all sorts of things crisscrossing and overlapping because we'll sort all that out with the 
rather wonderful. I'll extend this out to this bit as well. The rather wonderful um, trim extend tool. So I'll just click on that and I'll click on this on this. So that's going to extend to that corner and then this to this bit, not that bit. Because if I click on that bit, then it's going to trim this bit out. So that's the first one. This is the second one. So choose the bits that you want to keep, not the ones you want to get rid of. And then we'll go there and here, if we can. Now, what's happened here is we've got a line that overlaps. So I'll just step this back one and hit escape for a second and drag this down to there. So we've just got one line. I'll just delete it to see whether it's gone. Yeah, so I'll bring it back. So sometimes if the line stretches over the other one, then you might have to just sort of manually shift them around a bit. So back to the trim extend corner. And these are the lines I'm keeping. That one and that one. This and this. That seems fine. And that seems fine. Oh, we'll go back to this bit as well. I wasn't quite right. So we've now got a pad that's coming all the way around our building. The level is ground floor. So the constraint is uh, level zero, which is the ground. We can say OK to that. And we also get under the sketch option, remember, edit boundary. So if I wanted to change the shape of it, then I could do so. And I'll look back in 3D. And what we've now got is something that has squished that ground down around the perimeter of the site. OK, so if I was to select all of this and then filter it, and then we'll say check none. And I'll just keep the pad and the topography and say OK. And then I'll go to this option, which is temporary hide isolate. So we'll isolate category. Then you can see what we've got. So I'm isolating everything else from that selection set so we can see what's happening with our building pad. I'll just click away from that. So this is our pad. This is on level zero. So that's nice and flat. If we took a section cut through that, we'd see that. But what it's done is pushed down the ground at this point and raised it up at this point. OK, so that's all it's doing, giving us a level platform to play with. Now, again, it's up to you to sort out the groundwork. So I'll just push this down a little bit. Again, we can come in and select that and edit the surface. And if we go to the site plan of that surface, then we can manipulate these points again. So this is sort of below ground. We could make this 150. That's going to bring bits and pieces up. Or we could put some points around this bit and say that this is all sort of uh, at zero or just below um, ground line. So again, it's not difficult to manipulate these things. These points, if we place them, will snap to various bits of the geometry. So you could put these with an elevation of zero. around the edges of the building pad. So this is going to bring the ground up to meet that building pad and make everything much neater. You let the software take care of everything else. We'll say OK to that. We'll go back to our 3D view and then we've got a much nicer looking site now. OK. So that all I've done is just go around the perimeter of that and just drag this ground up sort of to tie in with it. Then I can reset my temporary hide isolate. And this is what we've got. Now this sort of effect we're getting because the building pad and the ground slab are at the same level. So if we select our pad, at the moment it's saying topography. I just tab in. I'm trying to tab in till I see pad. So I'm just using the tab key, hovering over the edge, not clicking anything. Now I see pad, I'll select that and height offset from level one. Let's just say I'll take that down 50 and apply that. So then we lose that um, banding that we get. It's just starting to appear at that point now, clearly because the pad has come around this point and the ground is at that level. So a little bit of juggling to do, but uh, hopefully you will get the picture from that. OK, this topo surface again can be adjusted. It is a material. Um, the category of that can be changed. We can edit the surface. 
we can simplify the surface uh, if we go into um, the massing and site options we can split the surface merge surfaces and create subregions within this topo surface and then apply different materials to it but that building pad function is very good for dropping or pushing down the ground so then you can build up with walls and other types of um, groundworks now a couple of things to mention about the building pad is that it can be a material as well so if you want to use it for something then you could do that quite handy for the base of a swimming pool for example you can slope it and the other thing you have to bear in mind is that building pads can't sit on top of each other they can sit alongside each other at different heights different levels but they can't um, cross each other okay so just bear in mind those sort of issues with building pads so that's a quick overview of topography and all the wonderful things you can do with it and then you can bring in site components trees and all sorts of other things to start making your model look a little bit more uh, realistic okay so next up we'll look at walls and uh, all the various types of walls that uh, you can play with.